Don't say it. those things about her. Why not? Because I love her. I know who I want to be with. It's you. I can't go to Venus with you. Don't do this, Libby, please. My mind's made up. for six whole months. Oh, mental note. Refers the company of old bombs to people. I'd ask you to be a little bit more respectful. Talking about my baby here. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. It's like creating a garden. You start with the soil and the seeds and you end up with something beautiful. Yep, nothing beats getting your hands dirty. Goes in really well for ladies too. Oh, being ignored while your boyfriend has a love affair with a car. Yeah, we love that. Can't see anyone ignoring you. So what kind of cars do you like then? Um, uh, muscle mostly. America classics. Uh, big old grunty things with V8s. Sounds like the old Chrysler we had. That was a beauty. Chrysler, eh? Any idea which model? 1966 Valiant Safari VC wagon. Nice. Ian and I thought so. I don't remember that car. Well, you were too young. She had green vinyl seats with leather trim. Quite the end thing back then. And bench seats too, if memory serves. They would have come in handy. <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. So we're talking a love wagon here, Yvonne. Don't. Oh, you're embarrassing her. I don't see her denying it. We were young. It's not like we got any privacy with Maya and Libby around. All right. If it's a rock and don't come a knock. <laughs> Mum! Oh, don't be such a nana. If it hadn't been for that car, you wouldn't be here. What does that mean? What do you think? I think we should probably leave before my mother rolls out any other horrible surprises. Uh, at least let me buy another round. Are you coming? Hold your horses. A little bit sensitive there. <laughs> She's lucky I didn't mention the Mori Minor that Ian had when we were teenagers. <laughs> Who's there? It's just me. Go back to sleep. What are you doing here? What's happened? Just go back to sleep, Gerald. You're supposed to be in Italy fighting for the great love of your life. Well, I changed my mind. Why would you do that? Because he needs to decide what he wants. Who cares what he wants? What he needs is you by his side in the most romantic city in the world proving to him that Gabriel's just Just no, OK? I have looked after Chris for so long and for what? He cheated. Not with anyone rich or glamorous or from the right family, but with her. They didn't actually do anything, did they? Which makes it worse. He cheated in his heart. I've done everything right. I have been faithful to him. I have loved him. All I ever wanted to be was good enough for him. Now it's his turn to prove that he's good enough. He has to fight for me. All right, well, you stay strong, Libby Jeffries. I will. Strong and together. And he'll come back to me. <laughs> it's not funny. Is it? No, it's not. It's disgusting. <laughs> Parents aren't meant to have sex life, especially not on cars. Oh, at least it wasn't a boring old bed. Oh, you find out where you were conceived and give back to me. No, don't tell me. I want to guess. Was it the packing shed? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Was it the orchard under the trees? You'll just have to use your imagination. <laughs> yeah, you're right, that's a bit yucky. No, yucky is her humiliating me in the pub in front of her bogan mate. Ben is not a bogan, he's lovely. Oh yeah, he's all class. If it's a rock and doom bother nookin. <laughs> he's a country boy. He's unpretentious. He laughed at me. He was laughing with you. Just his way of saying how much he likes you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I go into my happy place right now. <laughs> Oh, she could do a lot worse, you know. Ben is solid, reliable, down to earth. He's exactly what she needs. Well, maybe he is, but if he's not what she wants... Ben is the one for Tanya. I know he is. Still here. Not for too much longer, I hope. Well... You'll be pleased to know I took your advice, and there's no me and Karen anymore. Mm. How are you holding up? Mm. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem like it now, but you did the right thing. I promise. Do you think maybe we could just keep this between you and me? I don't really want Dad to find out. Hand on heart, 
I won't say a word. Thank you. My two favourite girls. What a pleasant surprise. I'd better get going. Get better. Looks like someone's finally coming around. You have no idea how happy that makes me. Oh, I think I do. <laughs> how you doing? I have a mild headache. Do we have an appointment? No. But I heard about Chris's little stunt, so I figured you might need a friend. Surely this shows you what a rat he is. You never said he was a rat. You said he had a tendency to sabotage his own happiness by making silly mistakes. Well, claiming to love two women isn't a mistake. It's, well, it's greedy for a start. I've never felt this way. And now I know it's the same for Chris. This isn't some big romance, Gabrielle. He's using you. To escape his commitment issues, to escape from himself, whatever the reason, you deserve better. But he loves me. If he loved you, he wouldn't have gone to Italy with Libby. Thanks. Well, we're off the radar now, which is what you wanted. So, am I clever? Very clever and very devious. So, you want to make out? <laughs> we could go upstairs. When's your next break? Uh, I think now's the right time. Well, we don't have to leave together. You could go up first and I could sneak around the back. Or we could wait for someone less public and more appropriate. There's no one home at my place. No. Why? Because your house is a completely stupid idea. Come on, Sophie, this isn't a game. There are very real risks involved here. I thought you understood that. I do. Just want us to spend some time together. Yeah, we will. Just not right now. I'll simply disconnect one small section of the brain from the other hemispheres, and since the seizures will have nowhere to nowhere to go. Hello, Peter. You got the notes from the meeting, I hope. Indeed. Gabriel was just. Yes, some surgery. Have you got time for a coffee? I know Callum would love to catch up. Sure. So, Warner strikes again, huh? Sorry. Libby, she's well rid of him. Although, I gotta say, Gabrielle did not see that one coming. Yeah, well, at least Libby and Gabrielle weren't close. That would have made it a double betrayal. If you are talking about Maxwell and I, it is hardly the same. Isn't it? Mmm! Feeble attempt of humour. <laughs> you said it. Listen, uh, I didn't mean to embarrass you or anything last night. I just thought it was pretty cool, that's all. Thanks. I mean it. I mean, all my parents can remember about me being created as it was lambing season. <laughs> Not nice mind pictures, eh? <laughs> Anyhow, if you want to hear any more of my amusing stories, you should probably let me take you to dinner tonight. Just casual, bit of a catch-up. Um, I, sorry, um, I already have something on. Just a little kiss, and you liked it. I know you did. Hmm. Boss, are you here? Ah. Whoa, should I be nervous? I'm sorry, it's going on with you. Well, it's hardly a roaring trade, is it? Oh, I'm sure we'll have to find another day. Good. Why aren't you in school uniform? It's Mufti Day. I'm just here to sort out my uh, shifts for the cat. It's my lunch hour, not that it's any of your business. Can I um, change my Tuesday night to a Thursday morning? Uh, one of my tutorials got changed. Uh, yeah, can't see it being a problem. Good, I'll put it up on the roster. Just kick her out if she gets annoyed. Yeah. Do 
you know how close that was to being complete and utter disaster? It could have been, but it wasn't. This whole thing is crazy. Well, I've booked a hotel. A room at the Collingwood, just for us. Do you think I'm being totally insane? No. Chris gets time to sort his head out, and you get to put yourself first for a change. I think you're being very sensible. Maya? I don't know. The guy's obviously confused. At least he was honest with you, told you before anything happened. So? So, if you wanted to unconfuse him, maybe you should have gone with him. Libby's made her choice, and we're going to help her make it work. In case you were wondering, it was my decision to stay here, not Chris's. I don't understand why you do that. Because I have confidence in our relationship. If I give him some time out, he'll realise the mistake he's made and we'll pick up where we left off. In the meantime, I hope that you'll give him some space. No phone calls, no emails, no contact whatsoever. Thank you. And I'd appreciate if you stayed away from me. Look out, someone's in trouble. Sorry? You and your face like thunder. What's the story? Just worried about my daughter. Oh, did uh, Tanya say something? Sorry? No, Libby. Anyway, uh, I owe you an apology. Really? What did you do? Not me, Tanya. Usually she has a much better sense of humour. Ah, that's no biggie. Some people just rub other people up the wrong way, eh? Oh, nonsense. She got a nose out of joint, that's all. I wouldn't mind betting that you two have a lot more in common than you realise. I'm not so sure about that. I uh, asked her out before. I think it's safe to say she's not interested. Oh, Ben. Did she say why? Uh, that she was busy. But, you know, that's no biggie. But you're exactly the type of man that she should be going out with. Why don't I talk to her? No, I, I really don't want you to do that. But I'd like to help. Yeah, and I'd like to keep the few shreds of dignity I have left. So, um, thanks all the same. It's not the first time I've had the big heave, Hope. And won't be the last, either. There's a spa bath. We so have to check it out. And look how big the bed is. Will you please try and relax? Well, I might if the receptionist hadn't looked at us the way she did. How did she look at us? With disapproval. Is there your far too young to be hanging out in hotels with older men? You're just being paranoid. She was just jealous that I get you all to myself. Either way, you're spoiling my fun. So, I'm gonna give you two choices. Choice number one, you can keep being miserable and paranoid. Or choice number two, you can show me just how fun sneaking around can be. You choose number two. Good answer. About time, they're screaming through murder and ED. I know, my stupid car broke down. What's wrong with it? Do I look like a mechanic? Is it the battery? Did you seize the engine? No, it just stopped and took ages to start again. I just totally oh, can't afford this right now. Just as well we know a mechanic then, isn't it? We do? Ben? No, I just turned him down for a date. I can't ask him to fix my car. Couldn't handle the lame jokes for starters. Oh, get over yourself. He's a grown-up. He'll be happy to look at it. No, because then I'll be indebted to him and it'll just be weird. <laughs> Why you can't see that he is a total catch, I will never know. One more try, that's all I ask. And if you still don't like him, which you will, Mom. at least you've got your car fixed. Mum! How about I ask him for you? OK, fine, anything to get you off my back. How's the patient? Brooke is a box of fluffies. So fluffy, in fact, they're sending her home today. That's fantastic news. Mm, definitely warrants a celebration. Libby, what was the name of that restaurant? You know, the one that you and Chris went to that... I'm so sorry, that was very insensitive. No apology necessary. It was called Mitfits, and the creme brulee was to die for. Mm. Libby, I don't know the ins and outs of your relationship, but if you need any time off... It's fine, really, and you have my assurance that my personal circumstances will in no way infringe on my professional responsibilities. Bar my meeting with Gabrielle, which you're officially exempt from, I'll get someone else to take notes. No need. I'm happy to do it. Okay. Ah, oh, 
Right on time, as usual. I'll organise coffee. Sorry, tea for you, wasn't it, Gabrielle? Yes. Shall we get started? So, it looks like the supply issues have sorted themselves out. What's next? Item three, staffing. I approached Keith Sharma at Central regarding the vacant register position. He's happy with the pay scale, but he would require a say in his roster. Mm. And he's specified this as a condition. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm loath to single out one employee with special treatment and would breed resentment. <laughs> Unless the whole thing's kept on the QT. No. Transparency is by far the better option. <laughs> I'll simply explain to Dr. Sharma that while we'll do our best to accommodate him, he'll have to accept a fixed roster like everyone else. Mm. Up front from the outset, good. Everyone knows where they stand. <laughs> Is there a problem? No problem. Although I think it's fair to say that making promises is the easy part. It's just sticking to those promises is an entirely different story. Gabrielle made promise to accommodate Dr. Sharma to keep him off her back. But when it comes to following through, well... That's a lot harder, isn't it? Is this really necessary? Maybe Dr. Sharma wants to stay at Central. Maybe Dr. Sharma has people who count on him there. Maybe he doesn't want to be poached. Maybe you should calm down, Libby. It's very hard to remain calm when people like Dr. Jacobs continue to steal things that don't belong to her. Libby, how about you sit this one out? Well, what? It's so different. What is? Being with someone experienced. <laughs> and uh, let's have a spa bath and get dressed and then go down to the restaurant for dinner. <clears throat> not ready to share you just yet. Well, aren't you hungry? I'm totally starving. Well, then I'll conjure up some room service. I'm sure there's a menu floating around here somewhere. I bought a cute dress to wear. I want you to see me. And you can show it off when it's time to leave. Come on, picnics and better fun. Is it because it would be embarrassing? No, of course not. Then why won't you be seen with me in public? I mean, this place is miles away from anyone we know. That's why I chose it. <sighs> it's miles away from anyone you know. My world's a little different. I've got contacts everywhere. Lawyers, accountants, suppliers. All of whom would quite happily stick the knife in if they got the chance. That's why we need to be careful. I've got a lot to lose. And I don't? Trust me, Sophie, if this gets out, it won't be you the point the finger at. Uh, so it's just about sex, then? I'm just your sleazy uh, little secret? You are far more than that. You're beautiful, you're smart, you're funny. Come on, look how much I'm risking to be with you. Doesn't that prove I'm serious? If you were serious about me, then you'd treat me like a proper girlfriend. If I'm good enough to sleep with, then I'm good enough to take to a restaurant. It's really good of you to do this, you know, considering. And just for the record, Mum totally bullied me into it. I'm really sorry that sounded bad. No, it's, uh, it's not a problem. So, uh, any idea on the prognosis? How's your relationship with your bank manager? Seriously, is it that bad? <laughs> ah, there's that uh, wacky humour again, huh? <laughs> Finally, she's catching on. Oh, no, a couple of dirty spark plugs are as bad as it gets. That and you'll need a tune fairly soon. Oh, thank you so much. You have no idea how relieved I am. Do you want to see how to fix it? OK, <laughs> sure. OK, um, see these uh, rubber wires here? Uh-huh. Well, each of them leads to a spark plug, OK? Thanks. Oh, look out. She's taking up boy racing. Carry on. OK, so the key is just to pull them out gently. Oh, spark plugs. Careful you don't break a nail. You know, I owe you big time for this. Um, are you still free for dinner tonight? My shout. OK. Uh, I guess so. Great. OK, so I um, pulled the top of the sparky things like this. Yeah, just gently. One at a time.
There's still plenty here if you want some. I'm not hungry. Okay. Guess I'll eat all this by myself then. Hey, well, you can't do that in a restaurant, can you? <laughs> can't do that either. Oh, good Lord. You are in serious trouble now, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you heard? Big bad Chris is in Italy all by himself. Is Libby still here? You think she'd have learnt by now? Take your eyes off him for two minutes and some other chick will get right in there. For someone who's meant to be smart, that Libby's pretty darn. Libby Jeffries is a very smart woman. The feelings that developed between Chris and I were unplanned and unexpected. Olivia was an excellent partner to Chris in every way. There must have been something he wasn't getting. If by something you mean sex, then you're wrong again. Chris and I have never had intercourse. Shut up! Just shut your stupid mouth right now! The rest of you, get out! I welcomed you. I was kind to you when you had no friends. I went out of my way to make life easy for you, and what do you give me in return? You humiliate me. You mock me, and you gossip about me in front of people I have to face every day. You're wrong. I was trying to defend you. What kind of person are you? I didn't mean for it to happen. I understand that it's wrong, but I couldn't control it. I know that I've hurt you, but I don't know what to do. I don't know how to fix this. You leave. I have tried to do this with dignity, but that is not going to work. If you want to fix this, you resign. Today. <laughs>